I request all of you to please settle down, take your seats and clear the aisles. Good morning and a warm welcome to all of you to the 21st International Tax Conference brought to you by ASACHAM. I'm your host for the day. My name is Anisha Nayar Dhawan. Today we have a very interesting session coming up through the day today. I implore all of you to please not miss out on even a minute of the proceedings today. Each second will be pure gold, a treasure trove of knowledge coming your way. During the day, we have senior government officials, uh, ex-government officials who are experts in their field who will come and throw light on the recent changes that have been announced uh, by the government in the taxation treaties and how they will impact you. So this will be very, very insightful for all of you. And in the end of the day, we also have a fireside chat with Mr. Ashwini Taneja, who will be talking about uh, P PMLA and the Benami tax, etc. He's a sector expert, and this is something you should all uh, wait and watch for. So believe me when I say it, you don't want to miss out on even a minute of the proceedings of the day. But we'll have to start on a solemn note today. A day earlier, we bid adieu to one of India's greatest titans of India Inc. Mr. Ratan Tata, Chairman Emeritus of the Tata Group, leaves behind an exemplary legacy of leadership, innovation, loyalty, and philanthropy. As we all bid him goodbye, I request all of you to say a farewell with a minute's silence. Let us start with our conference. All individuals, HUFs, and companies are required to file income tax returns with a, uh, within a specific time frame if the income exceeds certain thresholds. Now, I can say for myself as an individual that just the thought of filing my tax return gives me, you know, sleepless nights. World over, taxes usually have a reputation of being complicated and a little slip up can cost a fair bit. And it is not much better for larger enterprises. Their size doesn't win them any extra brownie points. Governments frequently change the rules to close tax loopholes that allow individuals or corporates to avoid taxes. However, closing one loophole often requires new regulations or laws, which in turn adds more complexity to the tax system. Recently, there have been some changes in a tax treaty. New global structures are coming up for MCs with digital footprints that are being structured. And integration of technology into taxation is reshaping how we approach tax compliance, planning, and strategy. To evolve a greater understanding of the emerging tax landscape, its impact, and possible approaches to deal with it, today we have tax experts joining us to help us find a way out of this maze of taxes for enterprises. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome our esteemed dignitaries for our inaugural session. Please welcome on stage our special guest, Mr. Akhilesh Ranjan, former member, CBDT. Joining him on stage is Mr. Sandeep Shofla, Chairman, National Council on Direct Taxes, ASUCHAM. We also have Mr. Rahul Garg, Advisor, National Council on Direct Taxes, ASUCHAM. Request him to please come up on stage. And Mr. Atul Puri, Co-Chair, National Council on International Tax, ASUCHAM. Please give our uh, esteemed Dignitaries, a huge round of applause as they come up on stage. 
We are very honored and privileged to have our esteemed dignitaries join us today. I would request Mr. Sandeep Chokla, Chairman National Council on Direct Taxes, ASOCHAM, to please welcome our special guest, Mr. Akhilesh Ranjan, former member CBDT with a plant. We are grateful to Mr. Ranjan for taking the time to come here, and we are eagerly looking forward to his views on the important issues of taxation being faced by enterprises in our country. Thank you. I would now request Mr. Sandeep Chofla, Chairman National Council on Direct Assets, ASOCHAM, to please address everyone and give uh, the welcome address, tell us what's coming up in the day today. Please put your hands together for Mr. Sandeep Chofla. Thank you. Namaskaram. Very good morning to all of you, members on the dais, panelists and speakers, colleagues from industry and profession, and dear friends. On behalf of SHM, I welcome you to this 21st International Tax Conference held today on this very auspicious Ashtami in the holy festival of Navratras. So greetings to all of you. Friends, you will agree with me that last couple of years, there have been a lot of changes. A tectonic shift has happened in the global economics as well as the geopolitics. The increasing dependence of the world on one particular country on, on purchase of manufactured goods has changed and is changing very fast. India is emerging and India now cannot be ignored by the world. And that is very much reflective of the way in which the BEP Section Plan 2.0, the OECD and the G20 and all the, all the members as part of the inclusive framework, they came together to address uh, the, uh, the, the international issues around taxation. A fundamental reform uh, is something which is on the offing with the action plans being rolled out uh, with the combined effort of not only the OECD, but also the G20 and the other member countries. So I think this is a big shift. And this shift happens because there is a change in the geopolitics there is a change in global economics and the fiscal policies have to follow as an important tool of the economics. The OECD, which hitherto used to uh, refer only to the developed countries, is, cannot now function and that's the realization in isolation, leaving aside the developing countries. And that is where the developing countries, they have now found utterance in the way the global policies, the tax policies are getting shaped. And at, a globe, and at the local level also, at a fiscal policy level, there are a lot of changes which are happening. Uh, the ease of doing business, the ease with which the investors ought to come into India to invest, so that the vision that our Honorable Prime Minister has of 2047 of making India a developed economy is really realized in the sense of simplification of tax laws, the exemptions being taken away and replaced by incentives based on productivity and the other uh, measures being taken to address the dispute resolution, trying to uh, mitigate the tax litigation are all positive steps in the right direction which will help usher uh, in a in, uh, lot of development uh, in India and making India a developed nation. And these are all uh, part of the larger scheme of things uh, which uh, are being contemplated. The topics for the conference, as the lady anchor was saying, 
uh, have been curated, keeping in mind all the aspects that I very broadly mentioned, whether it is uh, on the pillar one, pillar two, the web section plan, whether it is on the simplification of tax laws, on uh, the harmful tax practices, how these are getting, how these are being addressed at the global level and the local level, and the role of technology and role of technology in taxation also. So these are uh, bases, all of this, the topics for the day have been curated in that manner. And we have very erudite and knowledgeable, experienced uh, panelists and speakers who will take you through these uh, topics during the day. And I sincerely hope that when you leave this hall in today evening, you will have enriched knowledge and uh, would have learned from the experiences shared by the panelists, and there is a lot of takeaway uh, as in today. And with that, uh, I again welcome all of you and really appreciate uh, having taken out time on a weekday to attend this international conference, and I wish you all the best uh, and welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For the theme address, I would now like to invite Mr. Rahul Garg, Advisor, National Council on Direct Access as a champ. Please give a huge round of applause to Mr. Rahul Garg. Good morning, friends. Look at this. This is the 20th year of the International Tax Conference that brings together the stakeholders to make the businesses competitive. And that's the unique feature of this gathering. And I sincerely thank you all to join this. This is an amazing, amazing opportunity and a very constructive dialogue forum where we can make a difference. And we can make a difference to make businesses competitive. The only one expectation that businesses have from all tax legislations that how do the businesses become competitive? And that one expectation is easy to fulfill, isn't it? And as Sandeep mentioned, at this hour, when the geopolitic is giving some headwinds, some tailwinds, at this hour, when changes are rampant around us, this is the right time where a collaboration between government and the business can take place. So I would say that in this round of discussion, because we are focusing on doing something which is historical of doing a review of the tax laws to simplify, each one of you should put your head together. And this is the time where public comments are invited for such a project. So I would say as a theme of this conference to make the businesses competitive, I would urge each one of you to come up with whatever thoughts you have from your experience at grassroots, whether it is in relation to policy, whether it is in relation to design, whether it is in relation to implementation, or whether it is in relation to adoption of technology, whether it is in relation to aligning with the global laws and global policies. Please do submit your comments in the government portal. Also, you could write to SHM to voice your views, and we would do our best to compile it all and make a meaningful submission regarding this. The second thing I would say is that when we look at reform being the tax law simplification, just bear in mind that other than just the language, there are quite a few other things which may be needed. And each one of you represent a young generation, the next generation of the taxpayers. And the next generation of the taxpayer has their own expectation from around the world that they have. They'll need the bites. They don't need the paragraphs and sentences which run pages to understand what they need to do. And can we get that into the Income Tax Act? And how does one get that? Is it possible? The answer lies in what you come up with. Similarly, the businesses are becoming very diverse. And in relation to diverse businesses, any principle-based legislation 
is hard to consistently apply in a meaningful manner and therefore should we then take a turn and try to make the tax legislation prescriptive for each business and kind of businesses we have and kind of businesses which may come in the future and then it becomes a tax code like this. Is that better? Or is a simplified principle based tax code better? So it's not an easy answer. But I would urge you to submit what you think would work best to make your businesses competitive. The other important thing in today's world to look at any legislation is to see how amenable the legislation's implementation is to be run using technology effectively. And a principle-based legislation, you would all agree, is hard to be amenable to tax implementation, whereas prescription-based is much easier for tech enablement. And therefore, what's the choice you should make? In what area you should make this choice versus that? is again a question that would get debated during the course of the day, but I would like you to please put your head together, give the feedback to us. The last point I would say is that the next generation is very sensitive and much more agile to factor in the public interest in their decision making. If you were to go and buy a fridge and you know that everything is equal, but for a company you know that pays the taxes fairly, it would influence your decision. And therefore, how does one use the dynamics of paying taxes to grow the businesses and get a competitive edge by demonstrating that yes, this is where what we do as taxes and therefore we stand as a business different from our competitors and therefore influence the behavior of customers to buy your products. With this, I would end my conversation for the moment and invite you all to please write to SOCM. SOCM has formed a small group which would deal with all suggestions that you give. We'll compile something and if required, come back to you on that. Thank you very much for patient hearing. Thank you, Mr. Garg. Now for a very special address, I would like to invite Mr. Akhilesh Ranjan, former member CBDT. Please give a huge round of applause to Mr. Ranjan. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much and good morning, everyone. It's nice to be back with the SHM. I have been a fairly regular participant in the international tax conferences that SHIM conducts, and it's great to be back with you uh, once again. Uh, I think it's a, also a very opportune time for this conference to be conducted, not just because of the several reasons that Sandeep and Rahul just spoke about, but also because of the current state of play in the global world of international tax the increasing number of fractures that are developing in the international tax system with countries and groups of countries pursuing their own vested interest and in that process pulling the tax system in different directions resulting in a situation where there is no clear policy outlook which can, can discern from what's happening globally as well as domestic uh, in the domestic context. And, and this, this sort of a complexity, or all, all these developments, in fact, are, are meaningful for business in more ways than one. And most importantly, they are resulting in a whole amount of complexity, a whole amount of tax uncertainty, which uh, I, I can now realize that uh, the corporate world and the business world uh, is finding it difficult to, to cope with at the moment. And all this has coming about because of the various developments which you have all contributed to all countries globally. Started off with the emphasis on tax transparency and exchange of information. 
The OECD modified the Article 26 of the OECD Model Convention and declared that banking secrecy is dead. That was sometime in 2010. Thereafter, a spate of multilateral, bilateral information exchange agreements, the FATCA of the US, the Common Reporting Standard of the OECD, automatic exchange of information, the BEPS project coming up with country by country reporting, something which was unheard of, and now the European Union saying that the country by country reports must become public. A whole information explosion, which is good for tax administrations, good for policy makers, good for the world in general, but does require or does increase the compliance requirements, does increase the compliance costs. And, uh, and, and, and business has to be in tune with these changes. The second important development, the emphasis on tax avoidance or anti-tax avoidance measures, the BEPS project, the MLI, preventing treaty abuse, uh, limiting interest deductibility, the the general anti-avoidance rules in India, 2012, in major parts of the world. The angel tax in India, many such measures everywhere. Uh, emphasis on, on harsh penalty measures for, for, for defaults. New laws like the Benami Prohibition, Transactions Prohibition Act, the Black Money Act, which can have uh, very serious consequences uh, on, for even minor defaults. A whole, whole environment built up, not just globally, but also in the domestic context of trying to tighten up the law. And this movement itself has, has created a tremendous amount of uncertainty because it does lead to disputes, it does lead to uncertain positions, uh, and uh, it takes time for these positions to be clarified. And then, of course, the digital disruption, we are all now well versed with what we meant by pillar one and pillar two, and we'll be talking about it in, in the course of this conference. Pillar one was supposed to solve the problems faced due to the challenges of the digitalized economy. Suddenly the world found that it was possible to do business without a physical presence. It, could, it was possible to enter a country or a jurisdiction in a big way without having any physical base out there. And, and, and earn revenue from that country. The rules, of course, were not, were not, are not catering to that situ situation. So the pillar one was supposed to solve these challenges by allocating some profits or reallocating profits to market jurisdictions in recognition of the role played by markets. And at the same time, then eliminating the various unilateral measures that countries had adopted, including the Indian equalization levy, because you, you, would, you would move to a, 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 a broader and a, and a more reliable and a logical system of taxation. It would solve the problems of instability. It, was, it would solve the problems of uncertainty. But five years down the line, unfortunately, there is still not complete agreement on the contours of Pillar 1. The OECD has coined a new phrase. It says we have achieved near full consensus. Um, it's, it's a very interesting term as to what is really meant by near full consensus. The fact remains that the multilateral convention, which is supposed to be drafted to bring Pillar 1 into effect, is not yet ready for signature, and there is no indication as to when it will be ready. So what happens to these challenges? What happens to the instability uh, of the tax structure? It remains. What will happen to these unilateral measures? They will probably remain and get reinforced. Canada insists on introducing a digital services tax in spite of the US pressure. India has not renewed its transition agreement with the US beyond 30th June 2024. The stage is set for a, for a number of unilateral levies. And then there is talk of Article 12B of the UN Model Convention. There is talk of the new initiative in the UN uh, to develop a framework uh, a convention for international tax cooperation. And one of the first items that that convention will take up is the taxation of cross-border services. A number of things happening because we are unable to find lasting solutions to these problems uh, which we have been discussing for the last four or five years. Pillar two, a minimum tax, something which has been implemented 
doesn't have uh, that problem of agreement, but then it has its own problems. It brings into question the whole issue of tax sovereignty. Our country is free to decide their own tax policy. The OECD says that the developing countries will gain from Pillar 2. How will they gain? By removing incentives. But then incentives was a very integral part of tax policy for all developing countries. How does a country in, in like Somalia attract investment, uh, if not through tax incentives? But now we impose, we say that no, you cannot have tax incentives, you must remodel them. We have components like the under tax profits rule, a new concept in international taxation. One country can tax the profits of an enterprise arising in another country even though there is no connection with that, with that profit. A profit pie will be shared amongst nations on the basis of various factors which have nothing to do with their actual trade relationships. It goes against the concepts or principles of nexus. It goes against the principles of tax treaty. And it's no wonder then that the US doesn't like it. The Swiss Federal Council recently announced that it is adopting the income inclusion rule and a qualified minimum domestic top-up tax. But it also said that it, will, it is not implementing the under tax profits rule because it has some policy concerns with that. So what happens then? Ultimately then, all countries will end up with having their own qualified minimum domestic top-up taxes. The whole, con whole world will have a higher floor or higher threshold of tax rates, uh, losing various things, various initiatives in that process. But then these are, all these things bring their own compliance issues. Uh, the globe information return, which all of you uh, must have heard of, the, the large number of, of data points, uh, corporates, uh, multinationals, including Indian headquartered multinationals, have to think of implementing all those things. They have to now devise uh, their procedures, modify their systems, so that they can capture those data points and they can produce those reports and those returns that, that the new initiatives are bringing up. So a whole life, a lot of complexity. Uh, and on and, and top of it, a lack of certainty in taxation. We still don't know what's going to happen to this equalization levy. We still don't know uh, how uh, the profit attribution rules will develop in different countries. Uh, there is, in fact, no, not even a clear idea uh, as to what each country is doing. And in the course of this conference, um, uh, it'll be great to hear um, people who can tell us some more uh, on, on where India stands and what, where the world stands on all these initiatives. But then uh, what business has to do is find, try and find some clarity, try and find some certainty because you have to, you have to move, uh, you have to frame your tax strategies, you have to frame your business strategies. And that's the purpose I think then of this conference uh, which, which might not provide complete answers but which might provide a lot of information which can then be used by corporates to devise their own strategies to cope with these fast changing world. Uh, I won't take more time and stand between you and, 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 and the, the succeeding coming panels that which are going to discuss these various aspects, but all these separate issues are going to be talked about, uh, including, of course, as Rahul said, the, the initiative to simplify and the law in India and bring out a new law in uh, income tax law in India. Uh, I, I'm sure it, all of you will find it as, as interesting as, as I hope that it will be and uh, uh, we'll, we'll uh, leave this conference uh, uh, with, uh, with, with a lot of enrichment and a lot of new ideas. I, I once again congratulate uh, Asocham for conducting this conference at this particular time, a much needed conference, a conference which is very relevant for the times and, uh, 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 and I wish all the best to all of you for this. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. For the vote of thanks, I would like to invite Mr. Atul Puri, co-chair, National Council on International Tax, as a chairman. Please give a round of applause to Mr. Atul Puri. Thanks, Alisha. Uh, a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen esteemed guests, government dignitaries, 
and dear colleagues, as we being, begin this wonderful event, it's my honor to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of SOCHAM, International Tax Council, and everyone present here today. On behalf of the entire team, I would like to thank you and also thank our council chair, Mr. Nangia, for his innovative ideas of the subjects which have been curated today. I would like to uh, thank all the speakers and panelists, including Mr. Bala Subramaniam, Joint Secretary, TPRU, Mr. Mukesh Verma, CCIT International Tax, Mr. Chetan Rao, CIT Transfer Pricing, Mr. Pramod Kumar, former President, ITAT, Mr. Sandeep Shah, Head IFSC and Strategy Department, Give City, Mr. Amitav, DGIT Systems, and Mr. Ashwini Taneja, former member, ITAT, who will be contributing their wisdom as part of panel discussions today. I'm sure your perspective and knowledge will spark valuable conversations that, that will resonate for a long time after this event. Today's conference has been curated with a combination of multiple panel discussions, which will revolve around comprehensive review of Income Tax Act, recent developments in domestic and global taxation nuances around cross-border transaction and pragmatic role of Gibbs City. How generative AI is changing the environment of tax technology, and lastly, most interesting fireside chat on enforcement of PMLA and BMA, Black Money Act. I would like to thank each one of you for your participation, your presence, and engagement will make this gathering memorable, and we hope you will find it as enjoyable and informative as we intend to. A special thanks to our speakers and partners for their support and commitment, which made this event possible your generosity is deeply appreciated. Let us carry forward the discussion and ideas to be shared today and continue to support each other in the world of taxation. Thank you so much once again, and thanks to all of you. Thank you. Please give a huge round of applause to all our dignitaries in the inaugural session. Thank you so much for your presence. Uh, we, uh, some uh, of our speakers uh, will continue into the next session, but we thank you all uh, for your presence. I would request Mr. Rahul Garg and Mr. Rakesh Nangia to stay back. Uh, sorry, to, uh, Mr. Akhilesh Ranjan to stay back, uh, but all the others can gather now for a group photograph, and I'll just introduce the next uh, session that we have. Uh, our next session is on um, a comprehensive review of the Income Tax Act 1961 holding the crystal ball. The Income Tax Act 1961 is a comprehensive legal framework designed to regulate the taxation system in India.